Bien amigos de Pelota Brava, estamos a las afueras del Minute Maid Park, casa de los astros de Houston. Este martes comienza una de las series divisionales de la Liga Americana. Cuando los marineros decían visiten a los astros de Houston, acá en el Minute Maid Park. Como pueden ver, ya el ambiente de postemporada está acá. Todos los banderines nuevos o afiches alusivos al roster activo de los astros. Y en la entrada de primera base, que también es la entrada de los medios, pueden observar este afiche en el que vemos a José Altuve, Jordan Álvarez y Justin Berlando. La cita mañana. 2 de la tarde, hora de play ball. Pelota Brava estará aquí presente cubriendo la serie divisional de la Liga Americana. Justin Berlander será el abridor por los Astros de Houston con una temporada regular de 18 victorias y 4 derrotas con 1.75 de efectividad. Enfrentará a Logan Gilbert, quien ganó 14, perdió 6 con 3.20 de efectividad. Pero vamos a escuchar qué dijeron los protagonistas en la rueda de prensa. Let's go. So we're performing at the studio in Seattle before living here in Houston. I know that Seattle is a great baseball town that has been that has the luxury or that other teams or cities to have a postseason game. So first of all, we'll talk about that. How's it mean as a human being, as a resident of Seattle, to give them a 20 uh, a postseason for the first time in quite so long? And also, how do you guys plan to beat the Houston Astros and keep their offense under wraps? Yeah. Um Man, it's really exciting uh, just winning last series and knowing that we're going to have home games in Seattle. And we feel the energy. We see it. We feed off it. Um, they've been so good to us for so long, and um, the city's ready for it. So it's going to be really exciting going back there and just seeing T-Mobile back and feel the energy being out there. Uh, as far as the Astros, you know, we, we faced them a lot this year. Um, we've, you know, went back and forth with one some, they've won some. Um, I think at this point it just comes down to execution. We've, we've seen each other a lot of times and familiar with each other. And, uh, you know, they have a lot of good players, so it just comes down to execution. Just to the left. Uh, hard to say. But, I mean, I think it's just exciting. It's an exciting time, and we're deep in the season. We were trying to make that postseason run to, to at least get into the postseason, and now we're here um, making that run. So I think just being out there, knowing that we're playing in big games and big moments, um, it's easy to get up. Your body gets excited. And, Amped up, so I think that's probably a big part of it. Logan, uh, you were slated to start game three if you guys needed to, but you get the benefit of a few extra days rest, and I think you'll have you know, like nine or ten days at this point between starts. How much does that help you at this stage of the season, and how, if at all, did your routine change kind of coming into this one, given all the extra rest you had? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a big change um, knowing that you know we usually go in five days and now getting those extra days, and um, I've been off the mound a couple times because I thought I might be starting in Toronto and um, just wait to see how everything plays out. So it takes a little adjustment, but um, you know, for, for good reason, I had to wait nine or 10 days because we ended up winning the series and being here. So it's uh, all good changes and um, nothing, nothing bad. It's, if anything, good to get a little extra rest, especially at this point in the year. Logan, can you imagine Cal not catching you in a game? What is your relationship like? And does he really have a big number? <laughs> um, Cal's a man. Um, I'm you know, just so excited. I've said it so many times, but where he's at right now and what he's done for this team, uh, we wouldn't be here without him. So it's, it's really exciting to see that just as a teammate, but as, as a really close friend uh, for what he's done for this team and for the, the entire city. You know, everybody loves him, uh, and you can tell. So um, just. Uh, We have a really, really good connection. We've had it since early in the minors, so it's going to be fun throwing to him. Um, and for your last question, probably I'd say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Seattle, a home playoff game. I know something they've wanted for a long time, and um, us as 
players have wanted as well. So, um, well, we got to take care of business here. Uh, a couple games here in Houston, tough place to play. Um, we know they're a really good team. We played them a lot throughout the season, so we know what they got. Um, play good baseball, we got a chance to win. So, uh, one game at a time. text messages and the, and the reaction from family and friends over, you know, what happened over there in Toronto? Uh, a lot of excitement. Um, to go through that crazy game too, like that, um, you know, I think us as a club was trying to process just exactly what did happen, but then, yeah, you know, to, to get a hit um, and change the game, the phone's been on fire, so um, <laughs> it's, it's been all day yesterday responding to people, so. Um, you know, excited that we, we were able to get two days off though, because I think it's uh, uh, coming off of that to, to be able to get that extra day is a huge recovery wise for the body and, and the mind. So, um, you know, we just get a refresher today, get our feet wet here in Houston, and then uh, you know, hit the ground running again tomorrow. Still in court. <coughs> hey, Adam, Corey Brock with the Athletic. I'm curious about Luis Castillo. We saw the start the other day and the handful of starts he's made since the trade. But you probably have a deeper history playing the National League with him. What made him such a tough at bat when you saw him over on the other side? Well, I think <clears throat> everything you saw the other night is what made him a tough at bat. But, um, you know, playing against him, being in Pittsburgh for all those years, him and Cincy, um, faced him a lot. And, you know, it's, it's 97 to 100 that moves couple three feet and then he's got a, a straight one that is 100 miles an hour to go with an elite change up you know, slider so um, it's not like he's just throwing a question I gotta say no, I'm gonna try to work I, my way through that I, 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 so your question is just to make sure I'm, I'm clearly understanding the the pace at which pitchers work or are you talking about the fact that something was checked on his it, body it, which one are you talking about no not the one about the one that checked with the ear the ear yeah no, we're talking about, about, the, yeah. about uh, sometimes uh, the doing over timeouts or what say you in order to cut the the rhythm of the battle. Oh that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Just the momentum of the game. Exactly. Trying to slow it down, whatnot. Yeah, it's something that it happens quite a bit in the postseason, and it is not really any different than uh, any other postseason. The day, the games do get a little bit slower. They will slow down the magnitude of the play, the game, the pitches. Sometimes a little bit bigger. So uh, seeing guys take a little bit more time between pitches, whether it's stepping out of the box or walking behind the mound pretty normal, so I can't really comment on the whole Mets San Diego. We were flying here, I didn't see much of the game. Uh, won't comment on that one, but uh, uh, interesting opening question, I gotta say. I wasn't expecting that one. So. I think have things for, in, in, in a better rhythm, let's say. You, and yeah. lastly, obviously, the, the, the uh, opponent that you have in front of you guys, a very tall opponent that you guys know. Mm -hmm. Anything different about uh, facing them for the postseason? Right, right, right. Obviously, you know, the Astros are a very talented team. Uh, they, they've dominated the, the division here for a number of years. They've got a, everybody in their roster has got a lot of postseason experience. So uh, we understand that. We understand what we're up against. We are super excited to be here. Okay. And uh, our team's done a lot of things here over the last month, a couple months to put ourselves in this position. And we feel really good about our chance. We've got to go out and play. Okay. The game is taken care of on the field. It doesn't really matter what I say here. But uh, uh, we're looking forward to it. Um, you know, we, we've, our team has taken on a very, uh, a very good, uh, I want to say focused identity here uh, over recent weeks and I uh, feel really good about our club and we're in a little bit different team right now than we were earlier in the year. So, yeah, first of all, uh, uh, Justin Verlander, I mean, uh, what can you say? Unbelievable Hall of Fame type career, uh, on top of his game, maybe better than he's ever been, uh, most recently. And, uh, we've certainly seen him a lot through the years, and he's not slowing down, unfortunately, uh, for us. So, again, really good competitor, got great stuff, knows what he's doing out there in the big moments. It'll be a challenge for us, no question about him. We faced him quite a bit. Um, do understand that he's really good at making adjustments throughout the course of a game. Um, so, as he's adjusting, we have to recognize where we're at and what he's doing against us. So, again, playoff games oftentimes come down to two or three different at-bats throughout the course of the game. And our guys, I think, are aware of that. And big thing for us, and not trying to do too much. Get the ball play. Yeah, Jose, um, again, another guy I've seen a lot of over the years. Fantastic player, um, knows what he's doing, ton of experience. Um, he also has had his moments uh, in the playoffs. So 
Again, I'm looking at what we bring to the table. Uh, again, we're in Houston. I'm glad to talk about the Astros, but uh, I'm more excited about our team. And if we play our game, feel really good about our chance to end the series. Just such a great feeling. Um, you know, uh, it, it is just a different, it's a different game in the playoffs. You know, it just is. Um, you kind of get in the grind of the regular season things, you know, you just kind of like on this consistent ride. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, the, the playoffs are just a different animal. It's a different, it's a different game. There's a lot of, a lot more pressure. And um, I think drawing from the past, it's just a, you know, it's okay to understand that there is a lot of pressure and it's added and it, it's, uh, you know, but once I start throwing the baseball, I know that I'm gonna kind of settle into my routine and, and, and feel normal-ish. Okay, Chancellor and Mark in front. Justin, uh, Jose Altuve was at the top of the league as far as Leo home runs. Just for, for you, what was it like uh, watching him put points on the board so early in the game? Mm -hmm. And uh, from a pitcher's perspective, how challenging is it or frustrating is it to have a guy who can jump on you like that sometimes on yeah. the very first pitch? Yeah. Um, you know, Jose is just so impressive, uh, uh, such an impressive baseball player in so many facets. I mean, you can put him anywhere in the lineup and, and um, you know, he finds a way to do what's best for the team in that spot. And, you know, at the end of the year, you look up and his numbers are what they are. Um, you know, the leadoff spot, uh, you know, it, it's a difficult spot. Una postemporada en la cual va a enfrentar un equipo que tienen absolutamente nada que perder y todo que ganar, que vienen como los underdogs, como a veces a veces ha estado los Astros, no muchas veces, pero ahora les toca ser los favoritos contra los underdogs. ¿Cómo se le gana un peligrosísimo equipo como es los marineros? Seguir haciendo nuestro trabajo, creo que es lo fundamental y bueno, confiamos en nuestro equipo y en lo que podemos hacer y simplemente hay que seguir jugando bien. Y este último nos vamos. Eh, las, uh, ¿Cómo te sientes? ¿Cómo te has sentido durante esta este, temporada? Y rumbo a esta postemporada a comparación de los otros, los partidos, los otros temporadas. Este, no, muy bien, gracias a Dios. Este, siento que me fue muy bien esta temporada. Y bueno, con confianza camino a esta postemporada ya con la experiencia del año pasado y bueno, lleno de confianza y en que podemos hacer las cosas bien. Eso es la actitud. Gracias, hermano. ¿Eh? Rapidito, ve. Eh. No, pues, no existe lanzadores que tengan la experiencia quizás en este club que tú tienes en postemporada, ya sea el rol de abridor o el rol de estar apoyando el bullpen, pero es una responsabilidad grande, ¿no? Sí, claro, claro. Eh, cualquier posición es una responsabilidad grande. Esperemos y, y, y responder cuando, cuando nos necesite eh, el equipo, el manager y ojalá, ojalá que todo salga bien. El, obviamente todo, todo pinche quiere ser abridor este, y demás. Las cosas ahorita te este, ponen en la posición como tú estás en la, en la cuestión del bullpen. Eh, ¿Cómo pones a un lado digamos, esa hambre de competitividad, de querer abrir y estar listo para estar el rol que sea? Siendo un profesional que eres, ¿cómo te controlas y te enfocas a que no te gane, digamos... El, el, uh -huh. Si ¿sí me entiendes, o sea, el que chihuahua yo quería abrir. No, no, nada de eso. Uno, uno está listo para cualquier situación, para lo que el equipo lo desee. Como dije en un principio, eh, no me afecta en nada a mí ser abridor o relevo en estas, en estas circunstancias. Se entiende que son juegos muy importantes. Si me necesitan de abridor, lo voy a estar de relevo también y como el manager decía. Último, nos vamos. Pregunté también a Luis ahorita. Un equipo que viene como el Underdog, uh -huh. que es Seattle, que tiene absolutamente el mundo que ganar y nada que perder, y eso lo hace muy peligroso. ¿Cómo le hacen ustedes para vencer a un equipo que ahora sí que tiene el mundo que ganar y nada que perder? No, no se sabe, es parte de béisbol. Eh, queremos ganar, ellos también. Va a ser un buen encuentro, esperemos que un buen espectáculo para toda la afición, que a fin de cuentas jugamos para ellos. Eh, como te dije, son buen equipo, nosotros también, y vamos a, a guerrearnos, vamos a, a disfrutar el juego y, y que ganen mejor. Primeramente, pienso que la preparación es mental, ¿sabes? Tener mente fuerte y confiar en uno mismo para cuando uno tenga la oportunidad de ir a, al Montículo y hacer lo que uno ha mantenido haciendo en la temporada regular. Y principalmente, a veces las cosas no salen bien, a veces las cosas, pues, nos pasa a todos los pichos. Y eso es un mensaje muy importante para los jóvenes en especial. ¿Cómo le haces para borrar eso? Y subir otra vez al caballo, cuando ese caballo te tumba y a veces no tiene, no tiene así que compasión la hora de tumbarte porque aparte te patea. Bueno, eh, personalmente yo siempre pienso que Dios tiene un plan, ¿sabes? O sea, todo pasa por algo, todo depende de la manera en que tú lo veas. Cada vez que uno tropieza, tú tienes que aprender esa lección de por qué tropezaste, ¿me entiendes? Y cuando te vuelvan a dar la pelota, porque siempre habrá una nueva oportunidad, tratar de no cometer el mismo error.
Pienso que esa ha sido la, la clave fundamental en mí, sino ten, seguir con mi fe, de que yo puedo lograr ciertas hazañas, de que yo cuando tenga la oportunidad yo sé que puedo hacerlo bien y así es que uno empieza a crear confianza en uno mismo. Cuando uno cae y luego le dan la oportunidad y empieza a hacerlo bien y luego vuelve y lo hace bien, se requiere de mucha consistencia y trabajo fuerte. Esa respuesta, ah, yo pienso que esta fue una de las mejores, sí, gracias a Dios y pienso mantenerla así, así como también ya estamos en playoff. Mantenemos el enfoque, mantenemos el trabajo, mantenemos lo que todo el físico activo para poder dar lo mejor de mí en los playoffs. ¿Qué lecciones se aprenden? Porque no es tu primer playoff. Este ya viene siendo ya uno con más experiencia. ¿Qué, qué, qué experiencia? ¿Qué lecciones se llevas de las previas experiencias a esta para que esta se lleve uno todo? A mantenerse enfocado, mantenerse jugando como estamos jugando. Y ya que hemos ido a playoffs, sabemos a qué vamos, sabemos lo que vamos al terreno. Ya sabemos la adrenalina, sabemos todo lo que ha pasado. O sea, que es puro béisbol, que es todo intenso, y preparándonos igual y enfocado para poder dar lo mejor de nosotros en estos nuevos playoffs. Y aunque no quieras, me quedan 15 segundos. Las claves de la victoria contra un equipo que tiene muchísimo que ganar y absolutamente nada que perder, como los marinos desearon. Ah, solamente jugarle duro, que gane el mejor y que gane el que más se esfuerce, y lo, lo importante es la, la, la intensidad, lo importante es jugar bien en el terreno, hacer la cosa como debe de hacer, que todo eso tendrá resultado y nada, jugar duro como sabemos jugar. Exactamente. Dale. Éxito. Bueno, en verdad que yo solamente salgo a hacer mi trabajo. Yo solamente hago mi trabajo, llego al estadio todos los días para prepararme para el juego y que sea lo que Dios quiera. El spring training para acá, ¿qué es lo que tú has notado más cambio en ti? ¿En qué has crecido? Yo digo que he crecido como persona. Yo he madurado mucho. No solo como pelotero, sino también como persona. Eh, mi preparación, eh, ahora juego con más enfoque y en mi preparación también le he hecho más enfo enfoque. Lo que te iba a decir, o sea, eh, te, platicamos tú y yo al principio de la temporada y tenías todavía esos ojos de inocencia de que estás así como que llegando por primera vez. Yo todavía se ve so joven, pero tienes una mirada diferente, una mirada más determinada y eso eh, habla de crecimiento. Último y nos vamos. Un equipo que tiene... Nada que, per, este, nada que perder y absolutamente todo para ganar. Le dieron en la torre a Toronto en su casa, histórica, remontada. ¿Cómo vencer a un peligrosísimo equipo de Seattle? Eh, bueno, ellos tienen buen equipo y nosotros también tenemos un tremendo equipo. Así que yo digo que va a ser una serie muy buena. Y, pero nada, confianza en mi equipo, confianza en mi compañero. Y yo creo que tenemos la pieza necesaria para tener una buena serie. Y así que sea imposible hacerlo. Mi hijo te adora en tu comercial de Salsa Night. ¿Te puedo saludar por favor a Eric, por favor? Hola Eric, bla, bla, bla. Saludos Eric, ya va Jeremy, estoy aquí con tu papá y espero que la esté pasando bien, mío. No olvides Sasa. Es Sasa. Es el mejor comercial de todos, güey, te lo juro. Aunque, aunque realmente es flamenco. Pero bueno, o sea, potatoes, It, it is just a different, it's a different game in the playoffs, you know, it just is. Um, you kind of give them the grind of the regular season, things, you know, you just kind of like on this consistent ride, um, and then all of a sudden, you know, the the playoffs are just a different animal, it's a different it's a different game, there's a lot, of, a lot more pressure, and um, I think drawing from the past, it's just a, you know, it's okay to understand that there is a lot of pressure, and it's added, and it, it's, uh, you know, but once I start throwing the baseball, I know that I'm going to kind of settle into my routine and, and, and feel normal so many facets. I mean, you can put him anywhere in the lineup and, and um, you know, he finds a way to do what's best for the team in that spot. And, you know, at the end of the year, you look up and his numbers are what they are. Um, you know, the leadoff spot, uh, you know, it, it's a difficult spot, 